Hello and welcome to Flory Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got the massive Trumpeter 172nd Tupelhoff TU-94 MS Bear H. Massive. Now you might remember last week we actually reviewed the uh, TU-160, the Blackjack, and we thought that was massive. Uh, to go along with it, we thought we might as well do its counterpart, so we've done actually a bear. Now this is the first time I've actually reviewed a bear, and I've never built one, so I'm really excited about building this one in the future, purely because it's one of those bucket list kits I think we all have to do. And if you're gonna go big, you might as well do it right. So down here we've got the Trumpeter one. It's probably the only one that's actually in uh, 70 second scale. So you are quite limited on the ones you're gonna do, but I'm hoping we can see exactly what's in here. So you can see this is a massive, massive box. It is huge because let's face it, it's no slouch. This thing isn't quite as big as the uh, uh, back, uh, sorry, Blackjack we did last week, but at 68 centimeters long and 79 centimeters with a wingspan, it's 171 parts, nine spruce. It's massive. Okay, so straight off the bat, you are greeted by multiple uh, sections down in here. So we've got one massive sprue and then quite a few smaller ones. So if we just dig through here a little bit and then we can get rid of the said box. Just like that. Okay, so here we have a monster sprue. So what we do, we just start with the instructions. So we've got the call out as we usually expect down in there. So in our instructions, <coughs> that usual uh, trumpet away of doing things. I think it's probably easier to do the folder. So we've got parts call out, obviously using things down there, three, uh, three locations. Starting off unusually straight into the gear. So down into the actual main gear system as well. We've got these big old tyres, hubs, uh, and little tiny wheel wells that go with it. So all of that are being fitted down in there. Then we're over straight into the wing section, which is odd to do it this way, but it's a nice refreshing change. As you can see, we've got lots of uh, inner workings. Now, I don't know if this is supposed to be sort of, you know, deliberate, or it's just the way they've strengthened up the wings with this sort of hatching down in here. Um, but the thing is, it would worry me about sink marks. So it'll be something we're looking at quite closely. We do have uh, positionable uh, flaps and ailerons, which is a really nice touch on something like this. And we've got a couple of little formers going in amongst them as well. Then we're working off to the actual engine nacelle systems on these ones for those giant counter uh, rotating uh, props on there. Okay, and with those actual gear wells being fitted up into the actual uh, fuselages of those nacelles. Okay, then we're running down doing all four, as you might imagine right the way through and then obviously we're fitting those onto the wings we've got those big old exhausts being fitted down into those as well as it makes its way through exactly the same as you might expect on the other side then we're into the fuselage so cockpit looks pretty bare but we don't forget we are 172nd scale even though it is a monster okay so we've got those going down in there as well and then we've got the various systems down at the back some windows being fitted in there uh, and some of the obviously the clear parts being put in flight deck nose wheel system with a huge nose wheel down in there is being fitted on a little bit of interior painting required and then bringing these all together. Again, be interesting to see how good that seam is just as it joins the two. Glazing work being fitted on. Again, not a fan of this type of glazing work the way it goes on, uh, but we can only hope it's actually going to be quite a clean um, install onto that. If not, it's going to be out with the filler and rescribing and sanding and all good things like that. Refueling probe being fitted and then obviously various strafes, lumps and bumps, as you might imagine, uh, for this type of aircraft being fitted right the way through on this one. Next up, obviously, we've got the wings being fitted. So it's talking about the port wing being fitted. Again, a very small, looks like the old tab and slot system. Be interested to see how that fits in. It looks like there's a small recess. So hopefully that would help with your alignments a little bit. And then down into the back, it's tailplanes being fitted. Again, looks like it's poseable as well. And we've got poseable rudder, a really nice touch. Little defense gun on the tail, little stinger on the tail with the guns being fitted down on there. And then it's just a case of all the doors and all the lumps and bumps and everything being fitted down onto the underside. Remembering this is the maritime one, so it's got the little chin on there for the radome. So we've got some extra bits and pieces being fitted down under there as well. And then it's just a case of Bombay being fitted. Again, there is no Bombay, which is a little bit unfortunate. Scratch building time. Okay, so you could put a nice little Bombay if you wanted to. And then again, various hatches and uh, little areas, windows, various things being fitted down into the back. And then obviously we've got these down on here as well. And that completes your build. And again, a bit like when we were talking about doing the uh, blackjack, there isn't much to it, but it's massive. That's the thing. So it's one of those things that maybe small on detail, you'll make up with during the painting situation. And there we go. We got that standard sort of blackjack uh, color 
uh, scheme with this one with that sort of you know traffic gray uh, and then obviously with the metal colors and everything uh, and darker grays being fitted on there and again shown down in here either in Ukrainian markings or obviously in the Russian markings as well so a very nice touch with those so that's the two options in there and then it's in so if we start in this giant fuselage section first we can see what we've got we pop that over there Again, we are talking early uh, trumpeter, shall we say. So we're not expecting to have the gorgeous, fine, recessed details we've seen of late of those, uh, because this one is a little bit older, and I don't know if there's a date on one of these. Sometimes we can find a date on one of the parts. Doesn't look like we can actually see it on one round here. 2002. So there we go, as you said, it's early trumpeter with this one. So again, you are gonna get that usual thing with early stuff, but the panel lines are a little bit up and downy, you know, they go a bit trench and then there's hardly anything, that type of thing. So, you know, usual thing, bite the bullet, put it together and just rescribe it. Uh, it saves a lot of flapping around as you make your way through. So again, one of the things I'm a little bit disappointed, but I'm not, ex you know, really wasn't expecting it, but it's any riveting detail. So it is a little bit lacking in your riveting detail. We know this thing's got a few on it. Uh, to say the least. So, you know, again, it'd be one of those things you can come along with and do it. The only thing I do like about it, you hear that plastic? This is the hard plastic. It's very, very reminiscent of sort of Hasek Hours plastic, things like that. I find it a lot easier to work with and sand and gluing parts together than the traditional older uh, trumpeter styrene, which is very soft, very airfix or italery type. The trouble with that is, is that you get a lot of sink marks with it. So hopefully being this harder plastic, we won't get your traditional sink marks that we find in the softer plastics. So anyway, running around on here, God knows where we're gonna start, but if we start down at the bottom here, uh, we can see we've actually got the fuselage. This section in here we were hoping for, so it's a nice deep sort of socket that the wing system will fit into. So that should obviously negate any problems with actual flex of the wing and obviously getting the angles correct on the wings as well. But as you can see, there isn't a great deal to it. Okay, tail section again, this is what we were talking about. This panel line actually disappears as it joins down in here, then it's quite heavy. It's wobbly, if we're honest as well. It actually goes along as a wobble there, there's a wobble there, and then it is a wobble there, you know? So again, this is one of those things, you know, accept it, move on from it, fix it. Don't worry about it too much, okay? But again, nice, we've got a nice uh, difference in texture on the plastic as well. Some of these areas up here around the tail. Again, it'll take a wash and look absolutely stunning. Things we weren't expecting to be brilliant and we're not going to be disappointed then is the actual interior cockpit. There isn't much going down on there at all. Again, all the lumps and bumps look quite nicely done. And again, it's just a little bit heavy if you like. Uh, I've got the refueling probe there. And then obviously in the inside, as you might expect, we've got nothing. Okay, we've got a little bit of flash in some of these windows and things like that that you might want to obviously have a look at before you get too far into your build just to tidy those up. It might explain why your clear parts don't fit. Okay, let's do wings next. So, down in your wing section. Okay, okay so let's go over that. So... <clears throat> This is actually really, really nice, I have to say. So what we got down in here is some, a rough mold, shall we say. No one polished out the inside of the mold. It's okay up here, but it is particularly nasty. You can probably hear it. But we've actually got some really nice and a lot finer uh, details. So hopefully the, the camera can actually show those and it's gonna pull those out quite nicely. Because actually, that's pretty good. And I'm happy to report there's a tiny bit, but that's what we're saying. This plastic, with obviously this in here, what happens is sometimes you can get sink marks. Think Airfix and Revel, they do it all the time, okay? But this actually, because the plastic is the harder type, it actually, it stops it from giving huge big sink marks. And luckily for us, there's no sink marks in those wings at all. There's a little bit, you can catch it in the light, but actually from a visual point of view, I think by the time it's got a coat of primer on, I'm gonna have no problem with that at all. So that's actually really, really nice. And again, we've got a little bit of flash on these charading edges, things like that. You are gonna need just a little bit of a clean up, things like that in there. But generally, I think you're gonna be okay. And I have to say, I really like it. We've got a couple of close calls, usual thing. We've got the ejector pins almost coming through. Okay, but actually it hasn't, so we're okay. All right, so very, very nice indeed. Again, pretty much the same story for the top. And again, this is the only thing that is a little bit, this one's a lot different story for some reason. Now it may be that this is off, but I don't know if you can see it, but we've definitely got a little bit of movement 
Uh, I don't know how well the camera's gonna pick this up, to be honest, because I'm doing this somewhat blind, but we have got some sink marks across the top of these wings. Now, what I think a clever person might do is actually add a little bit of riveting along this marks, and that way you can get away with it almost being like stressed skin, because that's what, obviously, if this is correct on the inside to the ribbing and the formers, you would then be riveting in with it, and then that way it will give you a very nice stressed skin. So although you're trying to make a bit of a silk purse out of a sow's ear with this, actually it could work in your favor because it does look a little bit like stressed skin purely because there's so much of it. If it's one or two, I don't think you'd get away with it, but because it's covered in it, I think you could turn around and say that's stressed skin effect and we're gonna roll with it. So with the riveting in there, it gives it a reason for stressed skin and you can get in there and you'll be good to go. Again, there's a few little scratches and nasties into this one and I'm not sure why, but uh, generally all the actual paneling seems to be pretty good. It's just the mold is a little bit scratchy and not the best in the world okay but again it's probably an old mold this is a new kit i only got it a couple of months ago um so to be honest with you uh it's been obviously been used since 2002 so as you said you're sort of 16 years into this mold again some really nice touches that i like about this one as well lots of detail down on these engine nacelles right the way through this raised stuff at the back it's got a little bit of riveting down into this one as well pretty clean the exhaust areas look nice actually there's a lot going on in here which is going to pick out lovely with just washes uh, and a little bit of weathering okay down on the inside on the blind side to be honest everything is nasty but it's tucked out of the way so it's not a problem so really i can't see any problems with that at all okay so if we just move some of the other areas and then we'll come back across Okay, so so what would be wings to normal aircraft? This is flaps. So again, really nice with these control surfaces. Obviously, you've got the in parts. They're going to come along and slide down the back. Big old areas. Again, they're a little bit lacking in detail, but to be honest with you, I think some good reference photos, a little bit of rescribing riveting, because they're big flat areas, they're not a problem to take care of, and will really add some very much needed detail down into this particular kit. But actually, that's really nice indeed. Okay, getting to more of the detail areas. So again, nice to see we've got raised and recessed details down in here uh, on the sort of uh, the tail planes of this one. And again, the gear, although it's it's big, it's chunky and everything else, pretty much all the details there. Can need a little bit of clear. Now, with a little bit of burring, you can probably see that burring is this stuff that we're talking about all in between the, the molds. That usually transfers onto the parts. To be honest, it's quite nasty on the gear. So you are going to need a little bit of cleanup, but you've got a deburring tool, that's quite straightforward. Again, a little bit nasty, huge, great big ejector pins down in here in the actual wells, pretty much everywhere. To be honest, it's early trumpet up, it's what they did, okay? <clears throat> so really, you can't shout too much about it because uh, that's what they were doing in 2002. Okay, so we've got down in here, is this a match pair? It is a match pair. So counter rotating props, again, they're a little bit gnarly. They've got some big old flash on them, but generally you can see we've got those nice leading edge sort of parts onto the prop as well in the intersections. That's a nice touch with those. The wheels are a little bit, ugh, yeah, yucky. But again, I think by the time you get in there a little bit of weathering, sorting them out, put a flat spot onto them, usual things like that, you'd be absolutely fine. The uh, nose ones have got a little bit more sort of detail with some tread on them, which is nice, and some various things. But again, it's nothing that you're gonna jump home about. Once again, it literally is burring is a big problem. You can see it, this is what the, the flash in between, it transfers onto the parts as well. You can probably see it on this tire down the back here. And you can see lots of flash on this particular one, but again, we're gonna forgive it purely because of its age. So, almost done. We've just got the clear parts and decals to go. So clear parts, actually, I have to say, I've always said it, but trumpeters to clear parts are usually pretty good. Might moan all the time about the kits at some point, but the clear parts usually are pretty much spot on and those are no different so no problem with those at all it's just a shame that this framing is just so close to the back so if you needed to actually blend this into the fuselage trying to not damage the clear parts is going to be a problem it's nicer to have a larger section and then you put it in and then take care of it around the edges and then come in something that tammy has been doing a lot recently with their kits okay so that's very nice indeed last up we've actually got the markings which again are going to be nothing to write home about but 
Again, there's aftermarket options on these, pretty much straightforward. The nice thing is there's no stencil data whatsoever. One would thought the actual aircraft would be covered in it. Apparently not. No, we know it is, but obviously Trumpeter in the early days didn't really worry about that. So Ukrainian and Russian markings, which are probably about as good as going in the bin uh, and getting some aftermarket ones and stuff like that. There is aftermarket available for this kit as well to take it to that next level, but honestly, I think it's a great starting point. If you just want to do it straight out of the box, I think you could probably get away with it because of its size and its scale. But I'm really thinking, I think a little bit of rescribing work here and there, just to add a little bit more detail, a little bit of riveting detail, I think onto this one as well, would really make it pop and come alive. And just taking care of things like the gear, stuff like that, making it look a little bit nicer, will really add that next level of detail to the kit, which really it's screaming out for. But it is what it is, it's a 170 second and scale, uh, you know, TU-95. Who doesn't love a TU-95 with these gorgeous contra-rotating props? Very iconic aircraft that unfortunately in 70 second, it is on the large scales we've seen there. So you are gonna need plenty of room for it. But there we go. It's a must have, I'm gonna have to say it. So it's the Trumpeter 172nd Tupelo TU-95 MS Bear H.